Hi there. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Java with Otava. I hope you've had a chance to grab a cup of your favorite blend. I'd like to take a few minutes today to talk about some of the recommended rec focus areas for CIOs and technology leadership amidst this pandemic. But first, an introduction. My name is Jeremy Bigler, and I'm the Director of Product Management here at Otava. Now, as we look forward to our new normal and await a partial rollback on some of the current restrictions, I think this is very topical for organizations as you consider the impact the COVID-19 outbreak may have had on your business and your operating models. The information we'll discuss here today comes from both Gartner and 451 Research primarily. Let's get started. Let's start with a summary of Gartner's top recommendations for CIOs and CTOs. As mentioned earlier, organizations are looking for the new normal, rationalizing lessons learned from this pandemic and applying that learning to both your operational and business focus. Some of the stressors are listed here under impacts. The need to ensure continuity of operations while supporting secure access by a now distributed workforce. We've also seen global economic slowdowns and changing buying habits, combined with increasing unemployment rates and a shifting focus in our downstream routes to market. Finally, we've seen the spread of misinformation or at least imperfect information, leading to our inability to make true data-driven decisions on how to shift or pivot, as well as obviously impacting employee comfort levels and their own personal focus. Now, these impacts offer CIOs and CTOs leading innovation, disruptive trends, and emerging practices an excellent catalyst for change. Some of these recommendations are, <clears throat> first, most of us, if not all of us, have already sourced collaboration tools to address distributed workforce. However, with Gartner also projecting up to 41% of the workforce continuing to work remotely, for a period of time following a return to normal, it is critical organizations continue to explore how safe and secure access to critical tools and data from not only premise locations, but also remote as well, may be allowed across a variety of company and bring your own device style devices. Next, both our supply chains and routes to market will likely change or evolve as a result of the pandemic for the foreseeable future. This requires us to change the way we connect with and engage our partners and clients. It may also inform a shift in the products and services we offer, as well as underscoring the recommendations we made earlier about new models to ensure continuity of operations across both service supply and distribution chains. Finally, organizations also have a unique opportunity to engage your employees and partners, develop a culture of critical thinking and data-driven decision-making, <clears throat> resulting in improved data-driven data decision-making for the company, but also in employees' personal lives as well. Now let's drive down into digital workplace resources and access. As we consider connecting employees to systems and tools, it's important to note that, again, I'm sure most of you have implemented a number of these recommendations already to ensure your own personal continuity of operations. It is important, however, to evaluate a short-term stopgap solution against longer-term requirements, as we expect the new normal coming out of this pandemic to include a fair amount of distributing workers. Now, as the virus continues to spread, with only a few domestic locations reaching plateau or even trending down, company leaders and government representatives <clears throat> continue to ask or mandate people to avoid unnecessary travel or large gatherings. Businesses have seen unprecedented numbers of employees working from home, even when they're healthy, to increase social distance, one of the few ways to truly limit continued spread. As this trend will likely continue for the foreseeable future, CIOs can take these steps to make sure people have the systems they need to stay productive. First, inventory work use cases. Understand the typical workflow for people who are able to do their jobs remotely and identify the systems they need to access. 
Now these range from in-house communication platforms like email or messaging, all the way through to CRM and ERP systems. Include interactions with customers and business partners as part of the use case analysis and document potential needs of external users. Identify your security requirements, <clears throat> review existing security infrastructure, and assess what people will need to work safely. Consider the hardware remote uh, employees will be using, whether that be company issued or personal devices, and the networks they'll be on, both public and private. Consider endpoint security for devices and robust identity and access management to allow secure sign-in to corporate assets. And finally, <clears throat> update policies, access, and training. As companies expand the number of people working remotely, you will need to update your policies regarding who can do what, how often, and for how long. IT will, in turn, need to update system access, something to expand access and sometimes to limit it. All workers should undergo regular training on rules around data protection <clears throat> and proper security awareness, including data storage, content collaboration, and social engineering awareness content. Lastly, provide new capabilities. Organizations may need to quickly acquire or scale your technology capabilities. Video conferencing, messaging, collaboration tools, and document sharing are just a few examples of solutions you probably have put into place already. Additional bandwidth and network capability may also be required, given the increasing number of users and the volume and type of communications. CIOs will need to process uh, to quickly assess companies' needs and acquire access, ideally with flexible short-term contracts. Even organizations that have existing vendor relationships may have to renegotiate the number of users or transaction volume to accommodate short-term surge and long-term spikes or increased volume. Now, whether a business experiences surge or lulls in demand during this outbreak, the CIO or CTO needs to ensure IT systems are prepared for variable demand. Work with rele uh, relevant members of the C-suite to provide technology-enabled experiences such as, first, <clears throat> expand the capacity for self-service or digital sales. Companies will definitely confront waves of customer questions, orders, likely cancellations. Act now to prepare content and capacity for self-service web, email, IVR, chatbot, smartphone, other apps, etc., to handle the majority of those common questions or purchases, freeing customer service reps to handle more complex or unusual use cases. Enable remote experiences with a personal touch. Now, not every product or service is 100% suited to self-service delivery. Sometimes the human touch makes the difference to customers. Examples include business-to-business -business salespeople spending face-to-face -face time via Zoom or other video conferencing with their customers. Public uh, schools providing online classes so children don't fall behind. Or healthcare organizations expanding access to telemedicine uh, as well as conference organizers holding remote events. IT will continue to play a critical role in providing accessible, reliable, and secure IT systems to deliver positive experiences in unfamiliar contexts. Finally, embrace opportunities to adapt products or capacity for uh, current demand. The Japanese electronics manufacturer Sharp, for example, has converted one of its factories to make face masks. Manufacturers Foxconn, BYD, and GAC in China have likewise shifted some of their existing capacity away from their traditional products, obviously in low demand due to the outbreak, to high demand products such as protective gear. Uh, it's important for all of us to examine and expand agile processes to enable fast shifts of both physical and digital resources to meet an evolving demand and customer landscape. So in summary, our wish for you is that each of you is able to successfully navigate the challenging times we find ourselves experiencing. Otava, of course, remains committed to assisting in any way we can, and we look forward to connecting with you soon. For more information, we'd like you to invite you to visit our website and certainly take advantage of other videos in our series in the YouTube channel shown here. Hope you've enjoyed your coffee with Java with Otava.